Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art and we do a new project every week together. And this one, I'm really excited. We're gonna be mixing it up and we're gonna be using white. So this is a color that we haven't used before. It's such a simple color, but so powerful. So I'm really excited to introduce this to everyone. What the project we're gonna be doing is this guy. And so when you're looking at the, there's this, there's gonna be five different steps that we're gonna be doing. So the first one is we're gonna do the complete wash with watercolor. So this is watercolor. Also, I should preface, if you're new here, we're gonna be doing watercolors and then the, the white is bleed proof white. So it's gonna be a little bit different than the brush pen that, we might have, that we've been going through before. So we're gonna be doing a watercolor wash is step one. Step two is, we have a practice worksheet that we're going to be going through, and I'm going to show you how to do the bubble lettering, which means, so if you'll notice, there's a little bit open space in the middle here, and then also this is technically bubble lettering, so it's a new technique that we're going to be learning. Three is... It looks like it's not touching the paper. What do you mean? Oh, because of the shadow? Yeah, and that's freaking cool. It's floating. It's floating bubbles. <laughs> Um, I love it. Um, da, 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 the third step is we're going to be going through the layout of it. So there's a practice sheet that you can get. If you don't have it in our box, you can get it on our website at letsmakeart.com and find the Stars Can't Shine project. So we're going to go through and I'm going to help you lay this out. The fourth one is white. So I'll show you, like I said, we're going to be using bleed proof white. And then the fifth is the shadow that Keenan mentioned and all the little details. So those are the steps for this project. The supplies, like I mentioned, are we're going to be using three different watercolors. So I suggest having a cup of water, doesn't need to be anything fancy. And the three watercolors are Tahoe Blue magenta and black and so I know when you're looking at this you'll notice that this is more of a navy and it has a mix and a variance of it so we're gonna mix all those to create this wash then the other color is the bleed proof white so if you don't have bleed proof white you can also use Gouache is also you can um, another type of medium that you can use if you don't have bleed proof white, which is specific Dr. PH Martin's brand. Or if you want to do this project, you can also use a jelly roll or a white pen that you have. Um, those will also work great if you don't have these specific materials. So the white, and then I also suggest you having some blue painter's tape, which we're gonna use to tape down for our wash. And then also the other thing that's a little bit different is I'm gonna be using a wide brush. So this, if you have our box, doesn't come in it, but you just need something that's a little bit wider to create your wash. You can still use it if you want, if you have maybe the round six or any rounder, bigger brushes, you can use that to create the wash. Or even, I'll show you, you can even use your fingers. Maybe Keenan will use his fingers. I'll use a finger. <laughs> You'll donate one finger yes. to the group. Yes. <laughs> um, I do have a question though. Yes. What is a jelly roll? Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I realize that, that that's a brand name. Je well, jelly roll is just a white ballpoint pen. I don't have any handy with me. But they're white pens. So jelly roll is one of the brands. There's a couple others. But it's essentially a white pen that has the ink inside. And when you draw it, that's cool. it's white. Cool. It's a future project box nice. <laughs> um, very early hint but you can use any white pen if you if you don't have white thanks for the question Keenan okay all the supplies I also should have mentioned I'm gonna be using um, liquid watercolors but if you have any other watercolors you can use that as well so step one here it is Okay, so the other thing, if you would like, you don't have to do this, but what I did was I decided, so most of the paper, or the projects that we're doing are on this Canson watercolor paper, and it's nine by 12. So I wanted to mix it up and make a project for us that was a little bit smaller so that we can see what it's like to letter smaller because we're used to lettering bigger. So I just cut this paper in half. 
So I just made two smaller ones. So you can do both, do both of them at the same time, but that's why this paper is a little bit smaller if you're wondering. So step one is we're gonna do the wash. So grab your tape. If you don't have blue painters tape, you can also use, it'll work. If you use scotch tape and you, we've learned this from Sarah, is if you rub it on your, any, any fabric um, or your clothing, it'll start to get the paper or the, Sticky part, is this a good spot? Yeah. Okay. The sticky part of the tape will be removed a little bit from the fabric. Okay, so when you're doing this, what's happening is uh, you can dictate how big you want your border to be. So if you notice on here, I just had a little border, so I'm making sure that this stays. If it bleeds a little bit, it's totally okay. Um. Okay, so Keenan and I talked and we had to pause for a second because I'm actually gonna move this because when you do a watercolor wash, it'll take a little bit of time to dry. So I'm gonna move this over just so that you all will be able to see the right side of the screen and you can see what I'm doing. So just a really quick maneuver. Right about here, Keenan? More, more, more. Sweet, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, like I was saying, add your tape to all four sides and kind of eyeball your border. Oops. Okay. Then, like I mentioned in the beginning, I'm gonna be using a wider brush, but if you just have any bigger brush, you can do this wash. Or Keenan said he's gonna donate his finger for you all, <laughs> so he'll show us how you can do some finger painting. Um, but I have my colors already laid out on my palette, and move that. Okay, so when you're doing a big watercolor wash, I want you to get in the mindset of a kid and have fun because there's no right or wrong way to do this. You can do this multiple different ways. I'm just gonna show you a few different ways that you can do it. The whole goal, get your paint onto your paper. So what I like to do, one of the ways to do this is you can just use water first and draw or paint directly onto your paper with water. The reason why there are, let's make sure you can see this, are multiple different colors and not just straight. This is straight Tahoe blue, but what you can do is you can mix in, add a little bit of black, you can mix in a couple different colors. So what you can do, is that cool? Yes. Okay. So because it's already wet, oh, did you see that? Almost knocked that whole thing over. Okay, so that's one option that you can do is you can have, so that's called wet on wet because it's wet first and then you add the watercolor. Another technique is that you could do is you can just paint. So I like to use a wide brush because I like to use the belly of this and so the flat part. So I just kind of go like this. So what I want you to do is just pick up other colors. Maybe a little bit of black, might need more blue. So this is the fun, like I said, kid part, where just let it do its thing. You're drawing the, the dark night sky and you can choose what colors. So now the thing is that if you notice, I have a black harsh line like that. If you wanna get rid of that, just go back over it and massage into it. So you don't need to work, you do wanna work a little bit quicker than you might be used to. Ooh, that has a little bit more purple. Let me add some blue. So the finger part that I was saying that you can do, and it's really gonna bubble up. I wouldn't go too crazy on the water because this paper, you don't want it to um, seep all the way through. So, Keenan, you wanna donate your finger? Yeah, we're too. Well, so dip it in there, and then you just blend into it. So blend the bottom, yeah. There you go. 
Beautiful. Thanks for donating your finger. You're welcome. <laughs> your fingers are going to get a little painted. But you can, it could be fun finger painting. So that's one thing that you can do. Um, I also can donate my finger for the cause. So the cause. <laughs> it's all good. So this, I just wanted to show because if you don't have a big brush, you can still make this wash. Um, this is actually really fun. Yeah, it is fun. <laughs> Um, wow, there's a lot of color right there. So all you're doing is making a dark sky. So you'll notice because I'm mixing all three colors, we started, like I mentioned in the beginning with these three colors, I'm just mixing those in so it can create a darker color. And the other cool thing is that I'm gonna add some water to this part. And what I'm gonna do is get some color in here. I'm just gonna add in more color directly onto it. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of jotting into it. Do you pat, pat? Pat, <laughs> that's what it is. Um, <laughs> um, because I want to allow the color to, you'll notice by the end, that's what creates these blooms and these textures. And maybe I want to add a little bit more water. The other thing is that because I noticed it's a little bit lighter on here and that's where my quote is directly going to be, I'm going to add just a little bit darker of a color. Okay. Sweet. That's a little bit more purple than the original. That'll look cool. It'll look awesome. Okay. So let that dry. That was step one. And that will just dry as we are talking about the rest of the project. Okay, step two is bubble lettering. So when you're looking at this, like I mentioned in the beginning, you can see that, wow. <laughs> you see my finger now? <laughs> that also is paint. That's magenta. Yeah, I was going to say, at least it doesn't all look like blood. <laughs> I know, the magenta <laughs> looks like blood. Wow. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> um, Bubble lettering. So that's how you create, or we're going to go through the steps to create this lettering. This is a handout, like I said, that you can get on our website if you don't have our box or kit with us. Um, so it goes through the different steps that I want to go through. For time purposes, I'm going to show you how to do this on your final layout. So I'm gonna actually mix step two and three because um, I just wanna keep us going. So if you want, you can first practice this on your own. You don't have to go to your final layout, but I just wanna show you because I have to do it anyways. So for my layout, I made this box to use as my guidelines for stars. So the way to do bubble lettering is, can they see all that? Okay, it's okay if they can't see that actually. Um, is the first step is how to draw these outlines. So they're either called, I just call it bubble lettering. It reminds me of, I used to do this when I was in middle school and I loved that. Um, or they're just outlined letters. It's harder to do, where did my scratch piece of paper go? Well, it's fine. Um, it's harder to do the lettering like that just with an outline letter going straight for it so to help yourself out draw first so i'm gonna write stars in this spot do i need to draw darker i don't think so but okay. you might watch the left side of your head my head Heed. <laughs> um thank you I want to move this over a little bit. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just using a pencil and I'm just drawing my letters. Then the second step. Actually, I went too fast. The step to do this is I did this normally. This is how I would probably draw my letters. But what I actually want you to do is I want you to leave a little bit of space in between. So more than normal. Let me move this over. In between each letter? Yes, thank you. In between each letter because you are going to make your letters thicker. So maybe space it out a little bit more. That makes sense. That's why that box is a little bit wider. 
There we go. Okay, so I just had a little bit more space than I do than normal. That's step one of this outlined letters. Then the next step is, since you have used this as your guideline, and what you can do is you are going to draw the outline, but use this as your template. So you can dictate how thick you want your letters to be. So maybe you want your bubble letters to be a lot more bubbly, a lot bubblier. Bubblier. <laughs> a lot white, bigger. More carbonated. Um, <laughs> um, whoa. Can you see what's happening here? Not on the left side of the video. Oh, you're good. I'm so sorry. No, it's doing its thing. Um, okay, is I'm going to look at this line and use this as my guideline, and on the on both the right side and the left side of it, I'm just gonna draw another line that is a little bit whiter. So this is like sketching more. So that way I keep it similar sizing on both, or similar spacing that I'm allowing for each side. So then you continue to do that throughout and this is not meant to be a sketching class, um, but if you notice, there's different ways that people like to draw. So sometimes I tend, or what I tend to do is I tend to draw short lines like this and connect it. That's just the way that I grew up doing it and it's a little bit easier for me to draw sketchy lines. However, if you want, you can also just draw a straight line. That's actually not that hard. So either way, don't feel like there's a right or wrong way to do this. Mm, I'm not going to have a loop. I just naturally draw a loop in my R's. So especially on the R I wanted to talk about when you're doing this is when you're looking at this, if you imagine your eye is I am thinking about, oh, I added a little hump to that. That's cool, or knob. So all of this is one, is your eye is going to re realize that this is one straight line. However, what you have to realize is that these, this line and this line should all be on the same plane. So if you were to do this once and you look it at it and you think, why does that look a little bit odd? It might be because, so I'm just gonna do this. If, I, if you accidentally drew it and you realize it's like that, it's because my eye's playing tricks on me and this part is a little bit wider than this. So my, it kind of looked like my, my letter went like that and it has just a wider area. So the way you can remedy that if you realize this is your situation is just figure out what line, I shouldn't erase that, which line is not parallel and on the same plane. So I realized it was this one. So if I moved it over, that feels more cohe more in line with each other and more cohesive. So those are little tricks, especially on the R that's, oh, I guess the similar one is the A. So maybe it's whenever you draw the second piece of it, is this A is all on the same plane, so they're all parallel. These lines are parallel, and that's why this feels like one consistent line. So that's what I'm going to help you. Okay, let me finish out. I heard you make a noise. Did that mean that made sense to you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, do you think they can hear the rain? Yes. It's raining. Turn up the it's raining here in Missouri. It's static, but it's definitely oh, rain. it's rain and thundering. If you hear that, which I thought was really cool for this project, since we're making this. Um, can I, can we just show this part really quickly? Cause it's, I don't want this to do this and this might happen to them. They can see the middle, they can't see the left. Okay, that's fine. So while I'm waiting for this to dry, I just realized because this paper, um, I had so much saturation and uh, water and ink on here, it bubbled up into the middle. So it's okay if that happens. I just noticed it. So I'm just gonna spread this out a little bit so it doesn't kind of pool into that middle area. Okay, that's all I wanted to do. 
Okay, so that's how, oh wait, no. That, da, 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 da. The, the third step of this is once you draw your lines on the outside of it, what you can do is you use an eraser and you just erase your initial step, which was drawing, it's like your bones of your letters. Bones. Bones. Okay. There you go. So that's how you do bubble lettering. And if you want, then at the end, maybe I want to make this a little bit longer. This T. So when I'm looking at the T, the reason why I erased it was that I made this a little bit longer. So I just want to move this over a little bit more in the center. Super minor doesn't need to be exact, but I just noticed that right away. Okay, so to keep going and learning more about bubble lettering, I wanted to show you, I did it one other time. So if you're looking at the shine part of this. So when you are doing this, I made this square for you guys so that you could have a guideline, then that's where we're gonna do this. First, before I teach you that, I'm gonna show you how to draw this simple banner. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at this area and you're going to draw a curve. So it's going to have one hump, it's going to have two humps, or a second hump, or it's actually more of a, a hill and then it dips. Um, you can dictate if you want to do it the opposite. Maybe you want to draw it and it goes that way rather than up and then down. So you're going to draw it like that and then you're, let's see, you're going to draw a second one and you're drawing this parallel to this line, which means that it is the same, it is similar, because if it was perpendicular, for example, you draw it this way, like, so it looked look like a T, so I want it to be parallel. So think of it as, as two roads that are parallel and to the side of each other. So draw that, and then on the ends, you're just gonna draw a line in, like that. So if you want, if it helps, if you think about it, this is pretty much in the center. So I'm gonna take this point and draw to there, take this point and draw to there. So there's your banner. Okay, so now for the, I'm gonna add, yeah, that works. Um, I'm gonna add my, my lettering, my bubble lettering inside of this as well. So, and the reason why is because I wanted to have the white so it's like an inside out, but I need to give myself the illusion and the bubble lettering as well in order to paint that. So step one again, draw your letters with a little bit more space than you might be used to in between each letter. Then I'm gonna draw the outline of it. I'm just gonna draw it faster. So S's are a little bit funky also because if you notice on this S, there's two parts of an S. It's this one, two. And so what happens is when you are drawing an S, sometimes you can have a really big top and then a small bottom, or you can have a small top and a larger bottom. So you can decide how you want your S to be shaped. Um, the other thing that you can be mindful of is this end part. So I noticed that this went out a little bit, so I'm actually just gonna have this curve in a little bit more, like that. Um, really random tangent thought that I just thought of. Nice. I wonder if anyone in this group, I, I used to do this in, I think it was in middle school. I hope this doesn't mean anything weird. I don't know, I remember drawing that all the time in middle school. Like graffiti almost? Kind of. Yeah, it's really cool. Why did I, I <laughs> that's what that reminded me of when I was reshaping my S. Um, okay, so that's just something, an S is an, um, a little bit different type of shape. So I wanted to show that. So when you're doing this is you can dictate also, if you think about it, how much space you want to have in between. So do you want your letters on your banner to be almost to the edge or do you want them to be a lot smaller and have more room 
in, from the edge of the banner to the letter. So you can decide. So what I mean by that is I noticed on this one, I have really small space here, but then on the I have a lot bigger space. So I am going to make my eye just a little bit taller. N is also an interesting letter. They're all just interesting. Um, but with this one is make sure that it still comes to a point. So you're essentially drawing two V's and that might help. Wow, it is raining. Okay, so let me finish this out. Then, so even when I'm looking at this, I realize that I have a lot more space in between than I had anticipated. So I want to show you that I want to make my letters just a little bit wider. So instead of how big these are, I'm going to make them a little bit wider. Beef them up a little bit. So then when I go to my white, I'll be able to do that. Okay, then you can erase the middles. This is just your guidelines. Okay, now you can decide for the rest of your letters, do you want to do them, maybe you do them all on bubble letterings, or do you want to do them just some block flaunt. So this is your chance to design here. I don't want you to feel like you have to do exactly what I'm doing here, but I'm gonna show you how I decided to just do these in a script lettering, since that's what we've been learning. Um, and then I also, if you notice on here, is that I just decided to make them a little bit more angled, just to create some variance. So when I, that's what these three lines are for the other part of your quote. If you, want to practice at first doing your letters at an angle, this is going to be one of our beginner lettering series at the end. Um, and you will be able to practice. This will be a download sheet that you can download and you can practice. So what I did was I created this for you guys so that, <laughs> finger, because <laughs> I created this for you guys so that you can practice at, your ang at the angled. There's also this one where this is just, there's no lines on this one. This is also another one included in that. Um, but the reason why I wanted to show this is when you're doing this is my shapes and my letters, I call them shapes because it's actually what we're drawing, are all at this angle rather than, I'm drawing them here. That is straight up and down. So those are two different ways that you can experiment. It's all your same lettering, but you can dictate and change it up a little bit. So if you want, you can draw yourself some guidelines or you can try and go for it. But I, let's see. So I noticed that I'm going to fit my T right in that hole of the R. Okay. Can't, stars can't shine without. So I'm gonna continue with the angled. And when you're doing this, this is kind of just you going for it. I understand if cursive is not your, cursive is not come naturally to you. So if you want, like I said, you can do this in any other style that you want, or you can mix it up. Just wanna do this quickly for you guys. Okay. So now this is my pencil layout. Um, this is still drying a little bit. Okay, so I am going to, let me preface, to get your final project onto your watercolor paper, there's a few options. You can either go for it, and if you feel comfortable and you just want to paint directly on here with the white, and just use this as your guideline and have it right next to it and copy it, you can 100% do that. I also understand if that makes you a little bit nervous because you want, you did this hard work already and you want it to look like this. So what I like to do, and for most of my projects, if I'm doing a final project, 
is I use this time to sketch it out, get all those ideas out and make this what I want it to look like. And then I'm going to use a light box. So I realize, I don't know where it went. Um, can you, uh, so, but in order to be able to see through, so even though this is a really dark final project, final paper, you will be able to see light through. The only way you'll be able to do that though, or you'll be able to see your lettering through with a light box. But what I need to do is that I need to write, make this darker. So I'm just gonna use, you can use a Sharpie, you can use anything that's a look darker, a dark pen, and I'm just gonna outline so that I can be able to see it through. And we're back, except they probably, oh yeah, no it was, we, we sped well, we, up. We fast forward. And we're back. <laughs> um, okay, so now we are on to the fifth and almost fourth and almost final step is we're gonna do the white. So I mentioned that the white that we're using is bleed proof white. So in your box, what you have is you have a little jar of it. That actually, what that is, is we gave you a, a a really good amount actually um, from Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof Wipe. So this is what the container actually looks like if you're wondering what it looks like if you were to buy it at the store or our store. Right? We have, yeah. We have, we have it. Um, okay. So I'm going to use my palette again. And when you are using this, if you don't have a palette, you can also just scoop some into the cap, cap of your, your guy. But I'm going to, this has white on it. I mean gold, thank you. Um, I'm going to just use this. So you actually don't need that much. So I'm gonna scoop up a little bit and put it in my palette. And so you'll notice that when I put it on here, it is a, it's more paste-like instead of liquid watercolors. So do you mind if I shift? Actually, never mind. we don't even need to do that. I was gonna say, do you mind if I shift over so that I'm in the middle of this, but we're good. Because this is dry, I'm going to remove my tape. So when the trick with the tape is to, because if you rip too fast, you might rip the paper accidentally. So go slow. And for some reason, what I found is if you rip it at an angle, for, I don't know why, but you have a less chance Thunder interrupted me. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Missouri has great thunderstorms. You just don't hear them as often in California. Yeah. Not that I've never heard them. Um, so I'm just lifting it up. You don't have to do it this way, but for some reason that is easier for me. Um, so even though I noticed that it bled a little bit, that doesn't bother me at all. I think it's cool actually. So I'm just gonna slowly remove my tape. And so I waited, we waited probably, I mean, however long this tutorial was, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. <coughs> um, oh, that bled a lot more, that's okay. Um, I, you just wanna make sure that it's completely dry. Otherwise, when you paint on top of it, it'll just kind of bleed into it and, or feather and seep into it. So if you want, even you can maybe wait and you do this once and then maybe the next day you finish out the project. Just make sure it's dry. So when you're doing this, I want you to use your, if you have a light box, use a light box. Or if you don't have a light box, a trick is that you can use a um, baking glass dish, put it upside down. This is your I was gonna say Ikea hack, but it's not for me. <laughs> um, Ikea hack 101. Your hack is you use your phone and you put it upside down if you have um, a smartphone and you just put your flashlight on. Or Keenan noticed last time you can use a, a camping headlight. Hand, <laughs> yeah, headlamp. a camping headlamp. <laughs> um, you just essentially need a light source that will shine through. Or you can also use a window. Um, so what you're gonna do, or have I said this before? 
before I had the light box, I would, be, or if I'm in a dire need and I don't have a light box handy, I use my computer. I have said that. I was actually don't just thinking that. about that, and it just makes me sad for your computer. Oh, I I swear, that's because you love your computer. I do. It's a powerful machine. My computer is just like an arm of me. I, it's, <laughs> I, I mean, I love my arm, but <laughs> I don't take gentle care yeah, of it. Yeah. Sorry, we've got arms to spare. So. Um, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm taping my template down. And now I need it on the darkest setting. Now I can see through. So the thing is that especially if you make such a dark wash, it won't be as you're, you might be used to, is it won't be as shy, um apparent to see your lettering as if you're used to using a blank piece of paper and you can really see through. So this is just a, it's more of a starting point rather than you're exactly tracing it, but I can have somewhat of an idea, so it'll help me. So I'm going to tape this down. So, Am I in an okay spot? Yes, you are. Okay. When you're doing this, so I, I put my white onto my palette. You are going to need, so I got an, a, another glass of water um, because my other one was blue. Isn't it funny? We call this a glass of water even though it's not glass. It's a cup. A cup of water. Clear maybe? solo cup. <laughs> <laughs> you singing over there? <laughs> um, okay, he sings really well. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't a sarcastic joke. That was me being serious. Thanks, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can't, if I were to just not use any water, if I were to paint with this, Let's see, I think I have something to practice on. It can't really, I don't know if you can tell, but it might um, not glide as smoothly. So if you notice there's some scratchiness to it, let me take this off, some scratchiness to it. So in order to be able to paint with this and have it smoothly um, letter with, you want to add just a little bit of water. So I'm not gonna add too much, but I'm gonna add a little bit. So I'm just dipping my brush in and I'm just gonna mix it into this to create a little bit more of a silkier texture. Mm. I was trying to think of a word. Smooth, silky, I like creamy. A, I was like, I think you were gonna say one more. <laughs> um, okay, so for me, I tend to like to angle my paper a little bit to the left because I'm right-handed. So just know that if that's why I turned it a little bit, everyone can be a little, a little tad different, um, but that helps me set up. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go for it. We're gonna paint directly on here. And when I'm doing this, is you can start at any point, but I'm tracing, so I'm gonna be drawing just the outline of my lettering. And when you're doing this, like I said, if you notice that it doesn't glide as easily, go in and add a little bit more water. However, if you notice that it's too transparent and you can see through it more than you want and you want a more opaque white, go in and add a little bit more of your bleed proof white. And when I'm doing this, you'll notice that I am not drawing it or I'm, draw I'm doing that sketchy lines again Again, that's personal preference, but it helps me to also break it up into parts. And I'm pushing this down so that I can see what's underneath. So, the beauty of using the light box is that I can just trace, and I already did the hard work, but like I said, if you want to freehand it, you 100% can. Oops. And the cool thing is when you're doing this, you can dictate how thick you want your lines to be. So I noticed I went a little bit thicker on that. So I'm just gonna even it out and make this a little bit thicker then so that it matches. Okay. 
Okay. So when you are painting, I just wanted to go over this while I'm talking, is the, the technique of holding your paintbrush is different for everyone. So when you're going through this, you can decide and you can experiment with what works for you. So it works for me to hold my paintbrush or to hold my hand on this brush a little bit closer than normal because maybe you might want to hold it like this and a little bit farther away. What I suggest starting with, which has helped me is I, and when I teach, is I think of start with how you would write, write your name, how you would just write with a pencil and then adjust for there because the main thing is that we, I want you to feel grounded and supported and in control. So if you start with the way that you're used to writing, then I'm gonna wait and do this after, then it will be a little bit easier for you to adjust from there rather than trying to copy exactly what I'm doing. So experiment with what works for you. And also I should mention when I'm doing this, if you notice and Keenan can zoom in, is I'm only using the tip of this paintbrush. I am not pushing very hard. And also because I'm trying to create this line at a similar, or a, I want all of them to be a similar weight, I'm not thinking about thin on the up, thick on the down, like you might be used to hearing me say when we're doing the modern script lettering. So like I said, I'm just using the tip and I'm, I'm actually just really lightly gliding. I'm not pushing very hard and you can still get and see the paint onto your paper. Okay, so the reason why I stopped because I was in the middle of talking was this was that part that I was mentioning when I was showing you when we were doing the sketches is that when I'm doing this, I wanna make sure that this line and then this inside of my A is parallel and then this line is parallel to this line. Like that, oh, I smeared that, it's okay. Um, and then this line and this line is going to be parallel to the inside of my R. So what I'm doing is I'm eyeballing and making sure this space is a, just a similar, doesn't mean exact, a similar width. Okay. Cool. So what I'm looking at this and what I want you all to see um, is that I noticed because I went over this, this is a little bit darker, so I'm just gonna thicken some parts of this and just draw a quick line. So I want this to be a little bit darker. And also, it might be hard to see from the camera, but by doing another layer, it makes it a little bit more white. So if you compare this to this, it's a little bit light. Oh, I shouldn't have touched that. It's a little bit of a lighter white, whereas when I do one more layer, it'll just add another layer to, it, layer to it and make it pop even more. So if you see, this is a better example. That versus that, it's a little bit darker. So you can dictate how pigmented you want it to be. That's not the right word, I don't think. How bright you want it to be. Okay. So I'm going to continue and do the rest of this. Now, when we are doing, when on, I should have this next to me. Um, for my script lettering when I did this, because this is a little bit different, you don't have to really focus on thin on the up, thick on the down. And actually I'd love for you guys to just draw it and not think about this. We'll have other lessons where we focus on that a little bit more. So don't worry so much about that. Oops. Um, I just want you to draw it out. And it's a, actually it's called mono line because mono is one when this is a style that you can do if you just have it all be the same. Um, width. If you want, you can do the thin on the up, thick on the down. I just wanted to preface that you don't have to. Thank you. Okay. That looks, it just looks so smooth. Bang. It just flows on there. It's really fun to watch that. 
Um, and it's because we're not used to it because this is the first time we're using white. So it's like, whoa, that pops. Okay, so now for the banner. I suggest starting first with the outline of it. So let's see. Yeah, and this is, I really love drawing and sketching and it's fun to be able to incorporate that with our lettering and add some in. Okay. Might need to improvise, I can't really see, it got dark. Also, I forgot to mention, these are the blooms that we were talking about. That was really cool because you can see the difference on here. Oh, sorry, I messed you up. Oh, you're good. Okay. Um, you got excited to see it? Yeah, it's, um, it's fun to see the blooms. Yeah, so you can see right here and right here. So that was just water that kind of did its own thing. And I love how these were such different colors. I think I must have used more magenta, so it created more of a purpley color, whereas this one, I used more of just Tahoe blue and black. So I'm excited to see everyone else's other ones that they do. Um, I love how much they look like storm clouds. These ones? Yes. And how perfect it is for the weather right yeah. now. It's really, really perfect oh, for the weather. The clouds here are so cool. Okay. So I am just drawing. So I noticed that it's starting, or you might not be able to see it, but I noticed is it started to get too thick. So if at any point, like I mentioned, it feels too thick and more gloppy, I'm just gonna go in and add a little bit more water. So I should mention at no point have I gone in and gotten more water because I created this little part in my well already. So you don't really need, you'll notice you don't really need that much white because it actually goes a long way. Mm. You know what? I don't need that. Okay. So then once you do that, actually, I would let that, because I did this part, I would just let that dry a little bit. But I think I can make this work. Can't really see my S. Okay, so the only reason why I'm changing up my hold, just want to preface for everyone, is because I know this is a little dry and for time purposes, I'm just gonna go around it. This is a little bit harder for me to paint, but I'm gonna try it. Actually, this hold might, this is the way actually Sarah teaches in the watercolor when you're doing really thin lines, is to do a vertical hold. I'm just not as accustomed to it. Um, okay, so I am doing the same thing and I'm drawing my bubble letters. And then at the end, we're going to add in the rest of the banner. Also for the H, when I was doing this, I realized I can use this as another lesson point is you can decide where the crossbar of your H Wow, that H was really big and that S was really small. All good, I can fix that. Um, but I was gonna say is the crossbar of your H you can decide. So mine was a little bit lower. Maybe you want your crossbar. So your crossbar is the, how do I explain this? The intersection of your two lines. So it just crosses through the middle. So you can decide, do you want it to cross high or do you want it to cross low or in the middle? Let me just show you. So with, besides my hands, um, is, have a long-legged H or a short-legged H. <laughs> I like that. So you can decide, is do you want it high, do you want it low, or do you want it to the middle? Different ways that you can manipulate your lettering. Okay, let me keep going. Or do you have long legs? Do you have short legs? Do you? Me? I have short legs. Personally, me? Yeah, or uh, yeah. I think I'm uh, equally proportionate, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Except for my arms. I have a very long wingspan. He does. And he likes to use it to his advantage yes. when we play basketball. Yes. Rude. <laughs> NBD. <laughs> I don't have a long wingspan. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so I'm just tracing over my bubble lettering. 
on the bottom. So it's funny, my S, well, it's all good. My H just looks a little bit bigger than normal. I think it's because it's in contrast to my S. So that is this first step of to do your banner. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm add a little bit more water. Can I tell you why I think your H is bigger? Why? Because the S lines are thicker than the H lines. Look at you. Because you have a better view than me. Yeah, I have, I, I have three angles. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am so proud of you. You just noticed that because Thanks. that totally is what it is. I love it. And so I can, we can manipulate it if this also happens to you. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to color. We're going to fill in the negative space. And so when you're doing this, you might need to add more water than, or add more water to your paint so that it glides a little bit more. I'm just going to go right up to the edge of what I created. And also, I didn't even mention, or did I? I don't think I mentioned what brush I'm using. Sorry, people. I'm using, the, if I didn't, I'm going to say it again. I'm using the round zero. Maybe I did. I don't remember. But the round zero of the Princeton... Um, Iron brush co and I really like to letter with smaller brushes as you saw because especially for this one because we were using half of the paper it's a smaller area that we're drawing so I like to use a smaller brush and also I should say that rounds are probably the best for lettering because you can dictate and still use the tip and get a thin line and you can use more of the belly and press harder to get a thick line. And while I was talking, because Keenan noticed that my lines were thicker, what I can also do is, I know you can't, I can't see my lines anymore and how thin I did that, but I'm going to just draw a little bit more so that this width is similar width to that. So now that I did that, I am going to look at the little bit finer details if you want. And what I'm looking at is, for example, on this N, it got a little flat at the top. So I'm just going to, at the, not at this top, at this top of this part of it, the inside. So I'm just going to add a little bit just to make it a little bit more pointed. So same on there. So if that will help, that's why I was saying it's okay if you go a little bit faster. Okay, maybe the same here. You can get a little carried away, so it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, also, well, it's totally cool. I realize this part of my banner is bigger than that part, but it's all good, I like it. Um, okay, final. It's, it's curved, we don't know what's going on. It's Yes, thanks, Keenan. Um, okay, so I'm going to do the final part and draw the rest of my quote. Okay, without, where did I start my D? So I might just use this to figure out Mm, can't even see it. It's all good. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is, Keenan, can you zoom in on this? When I am dipping my brush in, I, I don't really like to dip in my entire brush because, sorry, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, but better late than never, is if I dip into this, you can see that there's a big glob. Should I go over here so they can see better? Well, I already had it on the paint sorry. Okay. So if you can see, I shouldn't want to turn because it's white on white. I think it looks good. Okay, 
all the whole point is that I'm trying to get you guys to see is that when I dip in my entire brush is that it globs and then there's it just bubbles um, and pools at the bottom. So instead, what I suggest to do is I just actually dip the tip in. So I'm only dipping about halfway. Or another option that you can do is if you do tend to just naturally do that, just use the side and kind of roll into it. So you're just getting the bulkiness of it off, but you still have paint that seeped into this brush. So it'll still be able to use it. That's just a tip I wanted to give you. Okay, I need to get in position to do this. So darkness is a little bit bigger than without. So I'm gonna start over here. So I'm gonna take it, go a little bit slower. Also, sometimes I realize I don't like to connect my Ks. That's just a personal preference. So if you ever see me doing that, you don't have to do that. That's just what I, I don't know why sometimes I do that. It's a good looking K. It's cause you're here. <laughs> cause his name's Keenan. <laughs> if you didn't know. <laughs> Spelled with a K. Um, okay. There we go. So that we did, we didn't do all the white. There's actually a little bit more white that I wanted to add, but that's how you can do your whole quote. Oh, I love this purple. Um, okay, so as I realized, so I'm, this needs to dry a little bit more, but, oh, that was a close call. Um, if you want, let's see. Since you have white still on your brush, let's do the stars and then we'll do the shadow details at the very end. So the last couple steps that you can do is if you look at this, you'll notice that I added some stars around the outside and then I also added dots in the inside of it just so it pops a little bit more. So if you also want to do that, all I'm doing is I'm, again, just dipping the tip of this. And what I'm gonna do is I am just going to pretend like I know where that middle line is that I drew in the beginning and I'm going to paint on that and I'm just going to add tiny little dots. So I am, I'm not pressing very hard at all. So add little dots along the line. You can dictate how close or far apart they are. It might actually be really fun if they're not all the same exact size. So then it adds a little shimmer an illusion to your eye. Um, okay, that is the stars, the inside of it. Now what you can do is have fun. Add in little stars on your night sky. So a few ways you can do this. One of them is what I'm doing is I'm drawing a line across, uh, around, across it and then an X over it. And you can make them, a cool thing that I like to do is you can make them, maybe your, your first cross is at that size and then you make your X like that. So it creates little, as it's another cool shimmer, so it just sparks it a little bit more. And then you can also add, oh, maybe, you know what would be cool is if people did snowflakes. It's not that it's summer, <laughs> but. That's okay. Maybe you're in a different part of the country, or you really like snow, or you're gonna hang this in your cabin in the snow or something like or that. Or world. Or world, what did maybe I say? Country, country yeah. or world. Oh, I really like that. So yeah, have fun with what you add. Then I have to kind of maneuver because I still see that's a little bit wet. So mix it up where you add them, at what size you add them, and then you can also, as you are doing this, if you want to create another trick is if so let me, if I move on my palette some white over here and I just have more water, it 
it's really, let's see, let me add a little more water so you can see the difference. It's because these had full blown white on it. If I just have a more watered down version, can they see that? Yep. Now it's a little bit lighter. So these are the same shape that I'm doing, but they're a little bit lighter. So it adds a little bit more depth and texture to it. So it's like, it's barely there. Maybe we need a little bit more but you can have fun with this. And then what you can do is you can add dots to just complete it and add a little bit more sparkle to your sky. <laughs> what? Sparkle to your sky. <laughs> um, okay, the other thing that I just wanna talk through is that I realized um, if you want you can make your either your shine if you want your banner so looking at this i can kind of see where um i just didn't draw as dark or didn't have as much uh white on my brush so you can see a little bit of spots where there's either less or more that is completely personal preference if you want to do another layer and make it a very bright white you can just do another layer over it I actually really like the variants, especially because it's like a ribbon. So it has that little, like Keaton would say, it's like a banner and a ribbon. Wave. <laughs> a wave, because it goes like this. Um, wow, I did that again. Didn't I do that in another video? <laughs> That's my move, apparently. Um, is you can, it's, it's okay if it has variants to it. Um, so the last thing is also the same thing that I was talking about is I realized on this one, I think I made these a lot darker, whereas these are a little bit thinner. All personal preference, how you can mix it up. But the final thing to show you, so this is the fifth and just the going on the final details is I added an ever so slight shadow to the, the side of my stars just so it pops. That's why for Keenan, he said it really pops off the page a little bit even more. And so, let's see, I still have some paint on here. Is I'm going to use, you can either use direct black, let's see, I might need to add a little bit more black to this. Um, is all you want is you want a little bit darker of a color than your background. So, also, I should mention, when I was cleaning my brush, I just swish into the water, and then I have a paper towel, and I just roll into it to get the excess off. So I would dip my brush in just a little bit of water just to get it going, and then go back into the, my darker color. And so what I'm gonna do is on, if you think about a shadow, or maybe in this case it's the moon and the moon source, um, Think about where it is. So if your moon, let's say, is right here and it's cast, it's hitting my stars and it's casting a shadow, I'm gonna create my, my source of light coming from here and so all my shadows are gonna be on the other side of it. If you wanna mix it up and your light source is here, then all your shadows would be over here. So you can dictate where you want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw on the left side of all of these lines and just, <laughs> well, I don't know if I smeared anything, but I would do this when it's completely dry. <laughs> um, it's all good. So I'm just painting again, I'm just using watercolor and I'm adding a line. So you can dictate how also thick you want your shadow to be. So maybe you want a really bigger one I'm just drawing to the left of it. When you are doing a more curved shape, I'll talk about it more on this one, um, but I realize I need to add some here. It makes sense, especially for these guys, when you're doing it to just have a straight line and on here. So on the inside of here and the inside of here. Let me pause that thought and then I'll talk about it on the other side of the S. But I was gonna say is, I noticed that even when you, I did it, is that I had it bled a little bit into my white. Don't worry about that because we can go back and just do another layer of my white. So I can fix that. Yeah, I did that again. It's okay. 
Can you see that from the top? Yep. It's a little bit. I can actually see it from the side. That's what I'm looking at right now. Oh, cool. Oh, that looks so cool. Um, so what I was talking about for the S. So when you're doing this is I'm going to do a the same size <coughs> stroke thickness as I did here. But then as I curve around, I'm going to make it thinner. So this, um, the same, well, it's the opposite actually. For here, I'm gonna start thin, and then I'm gonna go thicker here. So just, you, instead of having a straight line, it'll help if you think about where your curves are. So right here, technically, it's gonna be thinner and then thick. So that might help. So when I'm looking at this, the, I kind of wanna make it, do you think I need to make it darker? I just think it looks really cool. Yeah? Okay, cool. Yeah, because it's, it's kind of subtle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so once you do that, I'm going to go back in actually and just show you how if it bleeds, it's totally okay. And you go back. And maybe that's what I'll do in general. Is... You can go back over it. Well, all good. And it's gone. Magic. No one knew that it was there. And the cool thing is now that I'm just making this thicker, I'm gonna take the time and just make all my letters and just do one more coat and this stars will pop even more then. So this is personal preference if you want to go through this step. Okay, we are done. That was a really cool project to, from start to end, how it all came together. Um, you could, I could add stars for days. So I'm just gonna stop and take a break. Um, and I'm really excited to see what you all create. So we have a Facebook group if you would like to join. It's called Let's Make Art Lettering. And in that community, there's others who are also going through this and learning lettering. And it's a very, very supportive community. So I'd love for you to join. And I wanna see what you make. Um, we also have, I never say this, I realize. We have an Instagram, let's go make art. And then we have a Facebook business page. Um, I'd love to see you guys in there as well. I'm trying to remember what else I had to say, sorry. Tap my fingers. I think that's it, that's everyone. It. There was just a lot of learning in this. Um, oh, I just wanted to recap really quickly. So we went through, So, because I'm going to start to do that, if that's cool. Just recap really quickly. So we went over, we did a full watercolor wash. Then we went over bubble lettering and how to do it with a banner. And then we use white lettering and how to add details. So there's a lot of learning in this. It was a really fun one. This was my first time introducing white to you guys. So I hope you have fun with this. Um, and I'll see you next week for the next tutorial. Bye, everyone.